This past Friday, we went ahead and take, uh, took a look at the original spec for a gimlet, the history behind it, and its use as sort of a medicinal remedy for scurvy. And today, we're gonna take a look at a modern interpretation of it that brings back the idea of green tea and lime. Greg Henry's Green Tea Gimlet on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, hi there, ho there. My name is Michael. I am a bartender from the Kalamazoo, Michigan area. And today we are taking another look at the Green Tea Gimlet. Now I say another look because we did technically look at a spec for a Green Tea Gimlet created by Jalen Little, the video for which you can see up here. But uh, when I started doing that and researching her version of it, I stumbled upon some stuff. As it turns out, the recipe for a green tea gimlet is not a widely spoken about thing. It's actually quite difficult to find anything about the concept of this drink, let alone who might have come up with it. But the only other real mention of a verifiable spec comes from author Greg Henry and his book, Savory Cocktails. This is a really phenomenal in a very fascinating way, a cocktail recipe book that embraces I would argue less common flavor profiles than a lot of other cocktail books would. A lot of cocktails rely on, you know, a balance of sweetness and sour and citrus is really predominant and then you know, usually berries or and sometimes I'd say maybe, maybe tea and spices are next. But this really takes the idea of cocktails that can be savory and, and decadent and rich and dark and powerful and bracing and and puts them all on display in one book that, honestly, you could go through this whole thing in a full year and probably still have not tried everything. There's a lot going on in here. The one that I'm most excited to try is the Salad Bowl Gin and Tonic, which has like greens and tomatoes in it. And uh, I love both of those things and I love gins and gin and tonics. So maybe that'll be good, I don't know. But for now, we're gonna take a look at his recipe for a green tea gimlet from this book. Now, like I said, the history of the idea of a green tea gimlet is actually super vague, and Greg Henry may have been the one to come up with the spec that is popularized, but I really cannot tell if he's the one who came up with the whole crux of the idea himself. In the book, he doesn't refer to it as a cocktail he's created. He says, my green tea gimlet, as if this one is his, but not the entire concept. The more I researched it, the less I felt like I knew. So I think it's com I'm comfortable saying that he's probably the one who popularized it, but it's probably been a thing for forever. Kind of like how daiquiris have probably been around for mill not millennia, but like forever. And people just eventually gave the title of you made the daiquiri to somebody because it was convenient. What is a green tea gimlet? A green tea gimlet is actually a batch cocktail made using gin, green tea bags, uh, lime juice, and then a specialized syrup that in some ways kind of essence, it takes the essence of a cordial, but does not use lime, which we'll talk about in a little second here. Essentially, it is taking the idea of a gimlet in its modern form, which uses lime juice and simple syrup, and reintroduces some of the astringency that we talked about last week when we made an original classic gimlet. But look at that video up there. I like that one a lot. That's cool. Kind of takes all those things and puts them back in in a more fascinating and interesting way that I don't think people would commonly try. So let's go ahead and make one, which for me will be the first of these cocktails that I've ever had a chance to try. Let's give it a shot. So as I said, a green tea gimlet is actually a batch cocktail something that Greg Henry makes a mix for and then uses to produce the cocktails at a later time. But that recipe can be pared down to a single serving, which is what we're going to do here and which you'll find the specs for in the description down below. Technically speaking, a green tea gimlet requires the use of fresh tea bags, sort of being allowed to steep into the mix itself. Uh, it does not use an infusion of uh, green tea into gin, which I have here and am going to continue using. If you can't tell, I actually quite like this stuff a lot. I'm a big fan of this flavor profile. And I think that this will work just fine here because it's essentially the same thing, just the steps, one step done before the other. So in order to make a green tea gimlet, as uh, Greg Henry states you should, you're going to need some green tea gin, or at the very least green tea and gin, uh, some limes for lime juice, and what is in this bottle here, which is a lemon simple syrup. This is two parts sugar to one part uh, a sort of lemonade mix. Uh, so three quarters of it, in this case I did it, two cups of sugar and then uh, one cup of liquid, which three quarters of which of was li uh, lemon juice, the other was water. What this basically does to a certain extent, though without the use of like lemon husks or peel, is create a lemon flavored simple syrup that I think to a certain extent will uh, sort of kind of 
be a cordial, but not really. That's really all you're gonna need. So let's go ahead and uh, make ourselves a green tea gimlet. I'm gonna start off by grabbing my shaker here and I'm gonna begin with a half an ounce of this lemon simple syrup. The thing that you'll find about a lot of modern gimlet um, recipes is that they tend to sort of eschew away from one-to-one -one specs of sour to simple, unless they are pulling them both back at the same time to favor gin botanicals. And one of the ones I saw was two ounces of gin to three quarters of an ounce of lime juice and three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. And I'm like, huh, I guess that makes sense. You're favoring the gin, but you're still getting both of those things. The green tea gimlet sort of allows the lime juice to be bitter and astringent and then adds uh, a citrus flavored sweetness behind it, I'm thinking, to maybe build upon that. I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> I need to stop talking. <laughs> Half an ounce of our lemon simple syrup. And you know what? I um, I actually haven't had a chance to try this on its own. So I'm gonna take a bar spoon here and I'm just gonna pour myself a little taster sample because I wanna know what this is like. Whoa! Oh my God, no way. That's way more sour than I thought it was gonna be. That's awesome. It tastes like a lemon head. It tastes a lot like a lemon head actually. Like very lemony. And it's really fascinating. It's It's still sour. Despite being mostly sugar, this is still very sour. I guess that goes to show just how powerful citrus can be, even when you sweeten it. I wasn't sure how this would come out, because even when I was making it, I was looking at how much pulp ended up in it, and I was like, ah, I don't like that. But maybe that helped. Maybe that helps keep that sign kind of sourness in there. That's good. I like that a lot, actually. Wow. Following up that uh, simple syrup, we're going to need some lime juice, and I'm going to cut into this lime with my brand new bimish, bibish. My brand new Babish Santaku knife. This is the sexiest piece of cutlery I've ever owned. Easily one of the nicest things in my kitchen, and I mean that ironically. So much, look at that. Look at that sharpness. Babish line of cookware, buy it today. Andrew, Andrew Ray, you can just, you can just send me a check in the mail for that, that endorsement. I'm sure plenty of people will see this and, and flock to your site, because I'm so popular. I'm fucking around being an asshole, because this is the Tuesday upload. I like. I like being stupid in the Tuesday upload. For our lime juice component, we do need a full ounce, so I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze this into our shaker here. I don't know what happened, but out of nowhere, I could get really large limes again. I don't know if anybody else had that problem before, but I, I was having a really hard time getting decent sized limes for a while. I don't know if that was a problem for anybody else, but if it was, let me know, because I don't know what the hell happened. <laughs> and then finally, we're going to need uh, some of our green tea gin, a full two ounces in this case. I really do think this cocktail is going to read like surprisingly sour because the sort of astringency in the gin and it being an unsweetened product is going to kind of enhance those notes. And a full ounce of lime gin against a half ounce of even a double syrup seems like a lot, especially one that is as sour as it is because it has lemon juice in it. So I'm intrigued to see how this is going to go. We're gonna grab some ice and uh, crack it into here to shake, chill, and dilute. Uh, and then we will be able to serve our drink. Oh, like I said, the Tuesday uploads are a little bit stupider. Uh, I forgot to refill my nice big ice trays, so we're just gonna do a bunch of small cubes today. We're making do with what we've got. <laughs> we're gonna fill that up with ice, cap it up, tap it down, and shake to chill and dilute for 12 to 15 seconds. Now, unlike a lot of other sort of gin sour specs, this one is actually served over the rocks in a double rocks glass, which we are going to do like so. I don't have a cocktail strainer clean, fuck. Okay, that's better. One last shake to combine, and then I'm gonna double strain this over the rocks into the glass. Now I will say, there are there is a photo of this cocktail in the book. And this looks significantly more brown than the one in the book does. I'm thinking that the infusion of gin puts more green tea into the base than it does when you make it as a batch and you're combining all the ingredients together, uh, the ingredients together at the same time. Maybe there's something to be said here for going with the classic route of doing this, but I do like the notion of putting more green tea into something that touts being green tea. So we'll see how this comes out. I'm gonna introduce one more piece of ice to sort of raise our wash line a little bit because the garnish for this drink is actually a spent lime wedge, something that gets rested on top of the ice after you squeeze it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Squeeze a fresh piece of lime right over this. Rest that in the glass. And there we have, ladies and gentlemen, 
Greg Henry's Green Tea Gimlet. There's a cut in my hand, fuck. Greg Henry's Green Tea Gimlet. So here we have the Green Tea Gimlet by Greg Henry. We're gonna go ahead and give it a taste and see exactly how this comes together. Cheers. Oh my God. That's really good. But I think prepared incorrectly. So what I'm getting mostly on the taste is the green tea. It's coming through really, really strongly because we used an infused product rather than shaking, for example, uh, the cocktail with regular gin and a green tea bag in the shaker. Uh, I think there's a lot more oil and a lot more tea content coming out of the gin here than there would be um, in you know, the way that Greg Henry Doe describes making it. And that's honestly fine, actually, because as far as a drink being called a green tea something, that's what I would expect. But the question is, would I call it a gimlet? As it stands, no. For me, it's missing that really strong, astringent tartness that you would get out of a gimlet. And it's really heavy on the green tea. Then again, like I said, I made this wrong technically, so take it with a grain of salt, but it doesn't seem like if, if they're going for a prominent green tea impact, which they should, they're calling it a green tea gimlet, it should be very strong. It doesn't feel like it's built to the correct spec to, to accomplish that. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and, and try a thing real quick because typically speaking, I would argue that if you are using a tea infused product like gin or rum, and you want to pair that with a citrus for tartness, you actually want to do a full ounce of simple syrup rather than three quarters or half because the bitterness of the tea is going to cover up a lot of your flavors. And I think that might be what's happening here. So I'm gonna add another half an ounce of our lemon syrup and see what that does. Not just that, but I actually do really like this, this syrup. This would make really awesome um, lemon drops. If you were to substitute the syrup uh, or like add a half an ounce of this uh, along with everything else in a lemon drop. I think it would really like beef it up and make it really fascinating and just boom, lemon in your face. Cause it's also kind of like, it's a kid's candied lemon. It's a lemon, it's a lemon sherbet for those of you out in the UK who maybe or may not be watching this show. We call them lemon drops, I think, I don't know. I'm gonna give that a stir to combine real quick and see what this does for the cocktail. Well, I gotta take the thumbnail pick for this video. Uh, before I <laughs> before I uh, did this, because I, I cannot take a photo of that now. <laughs> okay, let's try this with a little bit more sweetness. You see, there it is. Ah, there it is, yes! <laughs> Bringing in some more of that very tart, candy-like sourness, that tartness, that preserved nature that the syrup has, and putting it into the cocktail, has taken down those T notes a lot. They were way too loud before, but now I'm getting them alongside the notes of citrus. And it's really, really working. I would call this a gimlet, but definitely a modern one. Distinct from a classic style one um, in, in many ways. It's very sort of Arizona lemon tea forward kind of flavors. and. It sort of evolves into the full bouquet of the tea and the gin, and that lemon goes away from being just lemon juice, but becoming that kind of astringent cordial flavor. And I think that's probably being done mostly by the tartness of the lime juice on the cocktail, whereas the lemon is providing the flavor because it is less tart than lime, but lime has less flavor, I would argue, than a lemon does. It's actually super good now. Uh, I, I'm i very fond of this idea a lot. I think the, the lime squeezed on top is, is, is dumb. I don't think that that really has any impact. If anything, I would say you should rim this with uh, a combo of uh, salt and lime zest. Just take the zest of a lime, get it real fine, or like maybe powdered lime zest if you can get that. Put that on the rim with some salt and then boom, you will have the exact impact you're looking for. Um, it's a little wasted here, but still, it's good stuff. Now the question is, can that be a regular gimlet? Which I, I, have, <laughs> I have sitting here because I just filmed that episode and now I probably look like an alcoholic, <laughs> but whatever. Let's do an AB with a classic style gimlet. This is my like kind of gussy up spec, but it's essentially the same thing. Alongside a modern, 
revised and sort of deliberated upon spec. First, the classic Gimlet. Definitely embracing the gin as sort of a predominant note and allowing those botanicals to be in full swing. I'm thinking this one might be slightly understirred actually because I'm noticing now the alcohol, vape, the vaporous alcohol-like nature of it is a little loud, but I'm still getting that very, very strong, potent, bitter, and astringent kind of moisture-sucking tartness that I want out of the gimlet. The basil on top here has kind of fucked that up a little bit. It's had time to steep and sort of flavor the drink, but I don't mind that either, per se. Let's go back to the green tea gimlet. They're totally different drinks. They're totally different drinks. There's not a comparison to be made here. This is essentially a gin, like a, like a two ingredient gin old fashioned in a way. That kind of, not really. This is a sour. They're, they are so distinct. They're so different. This is a martini. This is a sour. There is no comparison. The bright and distinct impact of the citrus here is important because everything else going on in there is a lot louder than what's happening here. But they do both accomplish that same sort of lingering bitter astringentness, but this is more effective at it. The classic is more effective at that sort of experiential note. They're both great, but I don't think I can pick a favorite between them because they're for different things. They're different, accomplishing different things between them. And it's not really fair to compare them on the basis of they have completely different sort of ideas behind their creation and completely different histories as well that picking one over the other would be kind of silly. So that, ladies and gentlemen, has been an examination of Greg Henry's uh, Green Tea Gimlet, uh, what I think may or may not be the first uh, print version of it at the very least, and maybe the original, original version. If you enjoyed the video, click that like button down below to follow me uh, and subscribe to follow me for the next videos. I make one of these every single Friday and then sometimes on Tuesdays, like this episode you're watching now. So go ahead and subscribe so you know when the next one comes out. Or you can go ahead and catch up on videos because this is a direct follow-up to our video on the classic Gimlet, which you can watch up here. I think I might have already pointed at that one up there before, but whatever, fuck it. Join me for the ride. Let's have some fun, let's have some drinks, and have a good time. Speaking of having a good time... Woo! That is a perfect wash line. Wow. <laughs> I want to stir it together, but I'm afraid to. <laughs> Shit. I don't know if I want to sign off and then sip it, or sip it, then sign off. I'm going to sip it, then sign off. Whoa! It's the Gimlet times 10, Jesus. Thank you all so much for watching, I appreciate you tuning in. Catch me this next Friday for a new video, this time on The Last Word. I will see you all there. Thanks for watching, you guys have a great rest of your day, and remember to drink responsibly, and have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks, and bye-bye. This is actually a surprisingly delicious thing. The basil and the tea is working really well. There is something about this combo that is just ringing it with me, man. That's really good. Oh yeah, the video's over, shit.